Halo, gue Sindu Alpito. Kali ini gue dapat kesempatan untuk wawancara salah satu musisi top dunia, Tom Morello. Nah, Tom ini akan merilis album solo dan beberapa waktu lalu baru aja cover lagunya Highway to Hell ACDC yang akan masuk ke dalam album barunya nanti. Oke, langsung aja ya nonton wawancaranya. Hi Tom, my name is Sindu from Medcom.id. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your opportunity. It's it's an honor for me for interviewing you. <laughs> Are you good, Tom? There. I'm well. Thank thank you very much for having me. It's always a pleasure to speak to my friends and fans and comrades in Indonesia. Okay, okay, um, okay, Tom. I have a few questions, and this the first one is: Lately, you seem to be more focused on your solo career and. Does this mean you are starting to feel comfortable on your own? Uh, well, I've been fairly comfortable on my own for uh, for, for quite some time. I've made, uh, you know, just during this pandemic, I've put out two EPs. Uh, I have this new Atlas Underground Fire record coming out. Uh, and before that, you know, this is actually the 21st album of my career. If you wow. count Rage Against the Machine, Audio Slave, The Night Watchman, Prophets of Rage, a couple records I made with Bruce Springsteen. Um, and and so I feel very comfortable both in a band and as a solo artist. Okay, I can't wait for your upcoming release. And I've heard about your Highway to Hell. It's very great. Congratulations, Tom. And Thank you. I, I, I just want to know, uh, how big the impact of ACDC for your life? Sure. I mean, ACDC was one of my, the big, my big bands growing up, you know, along with, you know, Black Sabbath and Kiss and Led Zeppelin, Iron Maiden. I was a big fan of metal growing up, you know. Um, and AC, but this song, this particular song, I did a cover of Highway to Hell, the ACDC classic, with Bruce Springsteen and Eddie Vedder. Um, and how it came together was, I was on tour, I toured with the East e Street Band in Australia, uh, the home of ACDC, and we were in Perth, where Bon Scott, the singer, is buried. So I went visited his grave and paid my respects. And then I afterwards, I asked Bruce. I ran into him in the bar and I said, um, "Do you?" think that perhaps the E Street Band and ACDC might overlap in any way. And he said, I never really thought about that before. And I said, well, we're in Australia. If we're ever going to do it, now would be the time. So he, he had the brilliant idea to start like rehearsing Highway to Hell. And when we got to Melbourne, we were playing this huge football stadium, like 80,000 people. And Eddie Vedder happened to be there because uh, he was on a solo tour. Uh, and we opened the show with Highway to Hell with Eddie Vedder, and people lost their mind. I mean, you can't you can't imagine how crazy people went. And as I was making this record with a lot of young collaborators, I mean, the collaborators on this record are Bring Me the Horizon, Fantagram, Chris Stapleton, Grandson, Mike wow. Posner, Damian Marley, Protohype, Femme, Refused, and Sama Abdulhadi. Um, I wanted a song with those guys, Bruce and Eddie, who have been you know my friends for a long time. <laughs> Two of the greatest singers of all time singing one of the greatest songs of all time, Highway to Hell. Okay, thank you, Tom. And uh, you have been playing guitar for years, and for this album, you decided to record your guitar in a simple way, only with a phone. What really happened, Tom? I was, well, I, I have a studio at my home. I'm in my studio now, but I don't know how to run it. Like, I don't know how okay. to work <laughs> the knobs or the buttons. Normally, there's an engineer who does that while I play the guitar, right? But during, during, pandemic there was no engineer so i had a, a room with that couldn't make any sound so i read an interesting article by kanye west where he was saying that he had recorded the vocals for several of his albums into the voice memo of his phone and so i just tried that with the electric guitar and it sounded great and so i was able to just you know put my phone up against my amp rock some riffs and send it to producers and engineers around the world. I mean, this record was, even though I made it alone here in the studio, there were collaborators in the UK, in Brazil, in Palestine, in Sweden, in Seattle, in New Jersey. And so it really became a global record, even though it was made in one room on a phone. Okay. How about the quality the sound? It's like, uh, sounds hi-fi or... With Surpr one? Surprisingly great. Like, I had no idea. Wow. And I, I, I have to thank Kanye West for that, because I was just... <laughs> You know, um, I'm gonna. I have. I have all these microphones that I'm gonna throw away now because now I can just do everything on my phone. Okay, great. Thank you, Tom. Okay, in Indonesia, you know, the young generation are still inspired by your songs. You know, there's a band consisting of a uh, three hijab woman, and uh, you notice that on Twitter playing Gorilla Radio. 
Do you have any messages for young generation, especially in Indonesia? Well, let me tell you that that band was one of the. It was so great and so yeah. inspiring. Really, like that's the spirit of rock and roll right there. Okay. There are no there are no boundaries. There are no borders. Whether it's gender, religion, country, or whatever, clearly, like rock and roll, you know, is the international language. And so, I mean, if I have any advice for 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 young musicians, is you know, just don't just get out there and do it. Play from your heart. Like the, the, in this day and age, where like you know, it's it, it there's not it, the same kind of the record industry isn't what it what it once once was. So the, I think the only measure of success is playing music that you love and music that you believe in and those three girls were certainly doing that okay the, the, the band called vob voice of budget Prod, they will play okay. in walken in next year walken okay. open air yeah great. it's very great, great. great. <laughs> they're gonna steal the show man i wouldn't i wouldn't want to play after them <laughs> okay uh What do you must remember about Indonesia, Tom? I know you you've been coming with your profit approach. Yes, yes, yes. Well, we I had a wonderful time there. Um, we were there for a few days, so we got to explore uh, Jakarta a little bit. I love the beautiful mosque uh, that we visited yeah. there. We visited some other sites. A friend of mine actually had lived in Indonesia for a while, so he told me some little restaurants and bars that were off the beaten path. It was nice to kind of sit there with the locals, you know. Um, Uh, but but then there was the show and and the fan like there were so many fans like at the hotel morning noon and night they were so nice and it like beautiful gifts and books and things and uh, and I had heard about the like the hospitality of of Indonesian music lovers and it even surpassed what I had heard it was really wonderful and it's really a, a highlight of my career to be able to have uh, visited there done some sightseeing there and played a show there and I hope to come back soon. Okay. Okay, thank you, Tom, for your time. I I hope we'll see you soon in Jakarta, maybe, or <laughs> somewhere. So, thank, thank you for your time. You thank you for talking. the interview. And okay. Thank you to all the all the Indonesian fans. Cheers. Okay, thank you. Bye, Tom. Oke okay, teman-teman, terima kasih yang udah nonton Terima kasih udah menyimak wawancara saya tadi Sampai jumpa di episode-episode lainnya Di wawancara-wawancara yang lain Sehat-sehat selalu ya, dah.